फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट इवन एज्यूमिंग दैट द आर्बिट्रेशन प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्वड हाईली टेक्निकल एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स इशूज विच वॉज टाइम कंज्यूमिंग इवन देन इट वॉज ओपन फॉर द आर्बिट्रेटर और फॉर द पार्टीज टू अप्रोच द कोर्ट फॉर एक्सटेंशन ऑफ टाइम टू कंक्लूड द आर्बिट्रेशन प्रोसीडिंग विच वॉज नोट डन आइदर बाय द आर्बिट्रेटर और बाय एनी ऑफ द पार्टीज एज करेक्टली नोटिड बाय हाई कोर्ट in its impugned judgment there was no cogent reason for the delay in making and publishing the award by the arbitrator he already had the relevant materials at his disposal and could base his findings on the observations made by the three arbitrators who were appointed prior to him it has been correctly observed by the high court that the arbitrator had become functus officio in the absence of extension of time beyond 30th of september 2005 to make and publish the award after the set date the arbitrator had no authority to continue with the arbitration proceedings the learned counsel appearing on behalf of the appellant argued that in the absence of any statutory period prescribed under the act for rendering an award the direction of the court to conclude the arbitration proceedings within the time prescribed by it would not make an award passed beyond the time so prescribed null and void he further argued that the high court was wrong in not extending the time fixed by it in the order for early conclusion of the arbitration proceedings and terminating the mandate of the arbitrator when neither the act nor the arbitration agreement prescribed any time for making and publishing the award so far as this decision is concerned we may keep it on record that this decision was rendered under the arbitration act of 1940 and a note under the present act with which we are only concerned in view of our reasoning given here in after and in view of the facts involved in this case we do not find any ground to rely on this decision of this court for the purpose of this case we have carefully gone through para 8 of the decision relied on by the learned counsel for the appellants we may not forget that we are concerned in this case with the arbitration act 1894 without going into the details of this decision we may simply say that this decision cannot have any direct application in his statement before the police he said that in the morning he along with his two younger brothers pw6 and the deceased was sitting on the chabutra of their batak in their village when deceased proceeded for his house to bring the clothes for getting ready to go to fridpur where he was due to appear in the ba examination as he reached the chopal where the lane turned he was way laid by the accused and his friend armed with knives as to the cause of the said incident he further stated that shortly before the occurrence his younger brother was elected as the village sarpanch he did not pay any heed to the unreasonable demands of the accused and this greatly annoyed them as they thought of themselves as the choudhary of the village this had led to an altercation and an exchange of hot words between the two sides on the previous evening but the matter was then patched up by discussion he finally stated that the accused in league with one another had killed his brother by giving him knife and lathi blows after the occurrence he brought his friend to the civil hospital kanpur where he was declared brought dead dr kumar pw3 who was in the hospital on duty sent information in that regard 
to the SHO PS whereupon PW8 came to the hospital and took down the statement of the appellant. The FIR was delivered at the residence of the area magistrate on the same day. What is however of significance for our purpose is that the trial court disbelieved a substantial part of the prosecution story. The trial court did not accept the prosecution case that accused were present at the place of occurrence and accordingly directed their acquittal. As regards, the trial court pointed out that the three incised wounds on the person of the deceased that were attributed to him were according to the medical evidence post-mortem in nature, that is to say, those three injuries were inflicted after he was already dead. The medical evidence thus clearly eliminated the participation of his friend in the case. He too was therefore acquitted. The acquittal of the three accused brought down the number of the remaining accused for the shared common intention with the appellant. Apparently, that was one of the reasons for their conviction simply under section 323 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Stop.